Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. Well, Alyssa Milano, actress, has been known for making a career out of exploiting her attractive body in order to garner male attention, has gone on a sex strike. In a tweet three days ago, Milano stated, quote, Our reproductive rights are being erased. Until women have legal control over our own bodies, we just cannot risk pregnancy. Join me by not having sex until we get bodily autonomy back. I'm calling for a hashtag sex strike. Pass it on. End quote. Now, Melissa Milano has a long history of being completely bonkers. Most recently, she got a bunch of Hollywood actors to agree not to go to the state of Georgia unless or until the so-called heartbeat law that was at that time about to be passed into law went down in flames. Her self-absorbed thinking was that this would deprive Georgia of so much income that they would be forced to capitulate. What she didn't understand is that nobody cares what a bunch of Hollywood actors have to say at all about anything ever. There's a brilliant quote by Marlon Brando who fully understands what the acting profession really means with respect to the larger world. And he said, quote, the only thing that an actor owes his public is not to bore them. Now, since nobody cares what Hollywood actors say, Milano decided the appropriate course of action now would be to imitate the ancient Greek comedy Lysistrata, in which women on both sides withheld sex from men engaged in war until such time as they made peace. Unfortunately for Milano, nobody cares what Hollywood actors had to say at all about anything ever. And this Hashtag sex strike is going to be utterly doomed to failure, though it certainly provides ample opportunity to lampoon both Milano and the raging feminists who are supporting her. The reality is that most women aren't feminists, and they find this law perfectly reasonable, and couldn't care less what Milano has to say, at all, about anything, ever. So, what's all this fuss about? Well, it's Georgia's so-called heartbeat law, which was signed by Governor Brian Kemp on Tuesday, May 7, 2019. The law outlaws abortions after a fetal heartbeat has been detected, something that can be detected five or six weeks into the pregnancy, while most women learn that they're pregnant between four and seven weeks. Exceptions to the law would include the abortion would prevent the death of the uh, sev or severe impairment of the mother, or the pregnancy is 20 or weeks or less along, and the pregnancy was the result of rape or incest, and there must be an official police report alleging an offense of rape or incest occurred. Or a doctor determines that the pregnancy is medically futile, meaning that a severe and uh, incurable birth defect or chromosomal abnormality would result in the child having little to no life expectancy. The act argues, quote, the modern medical science not available decades ago demonstrates that unborn children are a class of living distinct persons. Therefore, furthermore, the state act says, more expansive state recognition of unborn children as persons did not exist when P Planned Parenthood v. Casey in 1992 and Roe v. Wade in 1973 established abortion-related precedents. Now, this alters prior, prior state law that prevented abortions after 20 weeks, with exceptions for medical emergencies. Now, as a constitutional response to this, I am a libertarian, specifically of the anarcho-capitalist bent, which I'm not going to explain due to time constraints. However, I often make constitutional arguments because it's really, really easy to do so. There is no language in the Constitution that authorizes the federal government to be involved in abortion in any way. Therefore, under the Tenth Amendment, it is a power reserved to the states or the people. Now, when the Supreme Court involved itself with Roe v. Wade in 1973, it did so entirely unconstitutionally, usurping the legislative and executive branch's power by creating law where none had previously existed. And if you think there were no abortions when the Bill of Rights was ratified on December 15, 1791, then you have another thing coming. Abortions have been occurring throughout all of human history. And in fact, until the 20th century, doctors would euthanize newborns that they felt would stand no chance of survival. 
The reality is that under the 10th Amendment, Georgia has the right to pass this legislation whether anyone likes it or not. And if you dislike the law, the appropriate response is to vote with your feet and leave Georgia. If enough people leave, Georgia will feel it in their pocketbook and repeal the law. And in reality, there's a fairly large support for this law in Georgia, or it wouldn't have passed. So if you don't like it, leave the state for one of the other 49 that have different laws, or don't move to Georgia in the first place. There are plenty of options. Now, women's reproductive rights are not being erased. A state has passed a perfectly constitutional law. It affects 4,958,482 women, all of whom are in Georgia, and all of whom are free to leave Georgia for another state with different laws. It affects Alyssa Milano's reproductive rights, not at all. It also doesn't affect the 162,778,630 women in the United States who do not live in Georgia. And again, if you don't like the law, vote with your feet, leave the state, or don't move there in the first place. Now, my personal position beyond all of this is, I don't really care. And this is because of the large number of women that I've known who have used abortion as a primary means of contraception, one of whom did it no less than four times, as well as women who intentionally use pregnancy in an attempt to trap men into marriage, which seems ridiculous, but it does happen. This is one of the reasons that MGTOW, men going their own way, is a thing. And men, I have to offer you this advice. After you're done, wear a condom, and when you're done, pour a little Tabasco sauce in it. If you at some point hear screaming, then you know it's time to dump this woman. Now, if you're too stupid to get a condom, which are incredibly cheap and free on many college campuses, or get on the pill or the patch, which are also incredibly inexpensive, or use Plan B, which is also inexpensive, I really have little sympathy for you. This is not pre-1960 when the birth control pill was approved for contraceptive use throughout the entire United States. It is now 59 years later, and the pill has been in common usage since five years before my birth. If you can't figure out how to avoid pregnancy with so many options at your disposal, I consider you fantastically stupid. The reality is that Georgia has the constitutional right to pass this law, and if you don't like the law, vote with your feet, or better still, avail yourself of the numerous, inexpensive, or free means of contraception. As for Alyssa Milano, yeah, good luck with that. So that's all I really have to say about that subject for today. So thanks for watching, and feel free to leave your comments. I'd love to hear them. And if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and to tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would certainly appreciate your support, either via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch. And remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.